as always, I start doing a job and then I suddenly realize that I should be videoing it for the benefit of you viewers. So here we are. This great big Gouvernance's pine, or a dwarf Scots pine, has not been pruned for about 18 months. It was last done, I think, in April of 2020. So I haven't done it last year, but it needs a prune. Look at it, it's so dense. I will just show you, if you come close, all these prunings here. Look at all these prunings here. All that lot was taken out from just this little bit. So how do we get from a bushy bit to a more refined look? I'm not going to do the whole tree. I'll show you the whole tree after it's been done. Now let's just look at this branch here. How do I make this elegant? And of course it's near autumn so the needles are about to shed. So I want to create a more elegant look to the tree. So I do it really by instinct. Okay, I'm taking all that off. All that off. Just to leave that little bit. And then the tips I prune back. And that's what I get from there. So all that bit was taken off just to create this. Don't ask me how I do it. I just know how to do it. Just follow my uh, my instructions. Okay, so now, now this one here. See all the brown needles? What do I do with this? Okay, let's remove the very thick ones. The way to do it is always look for the thick branches and then proceed. And also the level uh, horizontal growing branches. Okay, there's a horizontal growing there. If you come close, you see. There's that one, but the one sprouting upwards, I take off. Okay, this is fairly horizontal. I'll leave that for a moment now. So I've got that. Now this one here, there's too much going on here. So I take off literally half that branch from there. And then they come close this way. Now this one, which is pointing upwards, I'm going to take all that off. And this one also, I will keep the horizontal ones growing. I don't want them to start <coughs> growing upwards. Now this one is very congested. So I'm going to take the whole of this piece off. Hold that off. I still got enough here. Now this is overlapping this. See this on top of this. So that's not doing any good. So let's take that off so that it's not overhanging the other one. Okay, that's also overhanging. I take that off. Don't forget, these pines are extremely vigorous. So, however hard you cut, they will grow again. So, don't fear. You will get more growth. Okay, what about this one? Okay, the upward pointing shoots I'll take out. Take out that. So, I don't know if the video editor can show the before shot so we've taken all that off to produce that very thin look so you can see we are aiming to get to here from this sort of very dense effect let's look at another one here this is another typical one you see how dense this one is absolutely dense but we will see what I can do to make it thin Anything pointing up, I'm taking off. So, I'm going to remove, I would say, 75% or 80% of the foliage from here. Again, anything pointing up, I take off. This is also pointing upwards. Anything pointing upwards. They are literally branches, whole branches are coming off. Whole branches coming off. Okay, that's going backwards. I don't want that one going backwards. Now there's some upward pointing branches. That is also upward pointing branch. I'll take that off. This is upward pointing. Let's take that off. And I take the tips out as well. Now this is fairly level. So if you get branches that are growing horizontally, I'm not worried about that. 
that would be fine that is also fine you see how I've thinned that out very considerably there's too much going on there these are back branches I don't want to take those out you see how elegant and sparse looking So this is the look I'm trying to achieve. That I don't need. That I don't need. And in fact, that also I don't need. I'm going to take the whole of that branch out. Whole of that branch out. Just to leave this little bit. So from that dense pad, look, see how I've created that very thin effect. Okay, let's look at this one. It's another massive dense branch. So remember, in the autumn, the pines shed their old needles, so don't worry about that. So how do I start? This is so dense, I want to get from here, this sort of effect, to this sort of effect. So let's just go in. Anything coarse and thick, I take off. That is very, very thick. I won't need any of that. So I'm going to take the entire thing off, that much off. It's just a question of thinning, nothing more. Absolutely nothing more. Okay. Be careful I don't fall in the pond. This is a bit of a nuisance coming this way. Let me get rid of some of this so that it's not interfering with this branch. This is another branch altogether. Okay, I'm coming back to this one. Anything shooting upwards I take out. This is also shooting upwards, so I take the whole of that out. So the essence really is not to be afraid to prune. Just thin it out, I'm thinning it out. And encouraging horizontal branches to grow. You see that's growing upwards, I don't want it growing upwards. Take that out. So I take out. Too much going into the back. Good time to prune is in midsummer, I would say around June, July, and again in the autumn for pines, garden pines, that is. Although midsummer is the preferred time, but since this is get, getting too dense and we have a bit of a warm spell, I'm doing it now. So I've thinned that very dense pad out. You can see how nice and sparse and elegant it looks. 
so you can see into the structure of this tree. All that off. I think people get terrified when they see me prune, but the end result is very satisfying, a very elegant look. So creating elegance out of chaos. Oh, that's another branch. At this rate, I'll be doing the whole tree before you know where you are. I do need to do the whole tree. The main structure I will leave, because this is a multi-trunk pine, I want to keep that multi-trunk appearance. So you can see I've done one pad, two pads, three pads, four pads, and another four and a half pads. So there's a whole of the top to do. So you can see the amount I've pruned here in just about five minutes. Look at the amount from these four little pads. So I'm going to deal with the rest of these. Let me just do another one for good measure. Anything going upwards, so this dense one. As with anything, the more you practice, the better you get at it. So don't be afraid. The Bouvernensis pine or the Dwarf Scots pine, if you can get hold of it, they're really nice trees to work on. Uh, they're slightly different from the ordinary Scots pines because they're so dense and they're so prolific in back budding and producing uh, these shoots. You see how I made this flat pad effect? So that flat pad has been created from the very dense upward going one. Now this is another little cute pad I'm creating. You see how nice that looks? Now this one again, I probably don't need all that. Be a bit drastic going there. Now this one, I could do this in my sleep, but it comes with practice. People always ask, how do you know what to cut? And you have the confidence to cut, but believe you me, if you keep doing this, it will become second nature to you. So you can see the another dense pad I've taken. So before I know uh, where I am, or before you can say Jack Robinson, I will have done the whole tree. You see how dense that is? Take note, because I'm going to do that uh, either the rest of this evening or tomorrow. I'm now continuing with this pruning of the dwarf Scots pine. You can see that I have pruned these lower levels and look at the amount I have pruned. As I'm saying, I'm not just taking the cans out, I'm actually taking branches out. So all this has been pruned from these lower bits. But if we take an overall shot of this tree, there is a lot more to do. And you must be wondering, how am I going to tackle this tree? Let me explain to you what I need to achieve. This tree is very top heavy. So I need to get rid of the top heavy look. I need to make a more conical shape because at the moment it's like a top. It's absolutely top heavy and the bottom is too light. So if I can use this great big secateurs, that is the sort of shape I need to create on either side. So we will proceed by doing quite a bit of pruning. So, a lot of it is by instinct. I really don't know uh, what the eventual shape will turn out to be, but I know that what I do will always turn out okay. So again, look at these big branches I'm taking off. I know that this tree is very dense. So because it's dense, 
whatever I take out to reduce the density will work. Look at that. Can you see how I'm already creating that dome shape like that? So anything which is breaking that dome shape is going to come out. Some big branches there. I almost feel that I need a ladder to get up to the top. If we come to the back, I know that the light is a bit tricky. The back is very dense as well. If you look from there into here, the back is ever so dense. So we're going to tackle that as well. But believe you me, they grow so rapidly that taking large branches out won't hurt the tree look at all that coming out you see how i'm thinning it lots of thinning to do so it's only two years since this was pruned Look at the big branches I'm taking out. That much out. Now let's have a look from that side again. If you look from this side, it still made no difference at all. Because it is just so dense. I'm going to keep a lot of these branches on the ground so that when I finish the project you'll see how much I have removed. I reckon I'm going to remove about 80% of the branches and foliage just to keep it in good shape. Don't forget that by pruning all this out, I'm letting light and air get into the center. So it will benefit the tree in the long run. So you can see that the left hand side has certainly been thinned a lot. So we will continue doing that.
So can you see how this cone shape is beginning to appear? It's now more of a conical shape than a big blob at the top. And I've got to now do the right hand side. So I'm now going to sit back and have a good look and take the next stage tomorrow. So this is day three of uh, working on this pine. So you can see how much we've taken off already. Each time I work, I work about one or two hours. So I've done four hours work already. And I think I've achieved about 40% of the work. Now, this one is in the way. The way I decide what to remove or what to cut is to try and show the main trunk. These main trunks are very, very interesting. So this is clouding and hiding the view of the other major trunks. I will get rid of it. This tool, by the way, is what we call the silky saw. They are a Japanese saw and they're extremely efficient. So you can see by removing that, I can reveal this part of the tree. So this is what I'm doing all the time. Now that, I don't know why that is doing nothing. And then over there at the back is a bit congested. Looking more to this side also. I think there's a conflict there. There's quite a lot going on there. So there's a branch at the back there. So we've got so many branches. We can take those off. Be patient. This one here, if I remove this, I've got to be just a bit careful though, because if I remove it, I can't put it back. Still just a general thinning exercise. We're thinning all the time. This one is very straight. And there's a lot of congestion there as well. But I don't want to lose the base because I've got to gradually reduce the triangle at the top. Okay. I've got to keep using different tools. That's an inside branch, so I'm taking the inside branch out. Yep. So we've opened out the center, so you can now see the trunks, but I'm not pleased with this portion. So let me take this off and see if it makes any difference. It should make a difference. Quite a lot of conflict going on. That's quite a nice twist there.
turn at the top. Keep filming from this end. Okay, so I want to show the apex coming. Right, let's have a look because from time to time I have to keep standing back to see how the thing looks. So you can see what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to achieve this effect. The triangular shape. And still have a very light and airy effect. Let's see again. I'm not too bothered about viewing from that side because if you look at this building here, this building is where most of the people stand and view the tree. So my perspective or the view is from here. So everything is really designed with this in mind. I'm not so bothered about people viewing it from the back. So this view is the principal view. So you can see the beautiful trunks. This is what I want to view. And while I'm talking about that, this little branch here is annoying me because it hides the trunk quite a lot. So I don't know how much of it to remove. I've removed quite a bit. I don't want to remove it entirely. But if you can understand the logic, it's hiding the view of the main trunk. But I will live with it because if I cut it off, it's going to be a bit drastic. And this wretched ivy plant, they always creep up the trunks. Absolute nuisance. But you can now see the beauty of the trunk. So this is a piece of sculpture. We're talking of using the tree for sculpture. And this is what I'm trying to create. Look at that intricate multi-trunk effect. Very difficult to get with pines. But the Bovenensis or the Dwarf Scots pine lends itself to this sort of uh, effect an image and if anyone can grow Bovernensis pine I don't often like to boast but Bovernensis pine is my specialty I've been growing it for the last 40 years and I simply love it and I know exactly how they behave so let's carry on I'm trying to be a bit cautious not going to be too rash in what I cut off. So all the time, I'm simply thinning the tree, thinning it out, thinning it out. If there are too many branches, it's just going to be thinned. complicated branches here. There's still so much over here. I 
That's a difficult branch there. What should I do with that? I don't know whether to take it off completely or not. Quite a difficult decision because if I take it off, it may leave a big gap. So let's take a little bit at a time. Again, thinning it. I may have to bring the ladder next. Yep. So to access the top, I've had to bring my Japanese tripod ladder. There are lots of small branches in here. Again, it shows that these pines, they break back from such old wood. So you get a lot of these thin branches growing from very old wood. So now I'm just taking the tops out so that it doesn't go any taller. There's still a lot of density there. I with that one. I think I may have to climb into the tree. Leave it. Let it be. It's easy to get into the tree and film it. You're filming? Yep. It's got so many branches, it's really like an octopus. Nice sort of effect though. This is still too dense. So this variety, the Bouvernensis, is quite different from the ordinary Pinus sylvestris or the uh, ordinary Scots pine because the ordinary Scots pine has a more loose and open habit whereas the Bouvernensis has a very tight habit. 
that's one of the reasons why it makes such a lovely bonsai subject. I think I'm almost there. get out of the tree and see what it looks like. So as I said, the whole object is to show the beautiful trunk and the structure. And I think I've more or less achieved it. So you look at it, it's a piece of sculpture with that very intricate trunk and I will show as much as I want, but I don't want to denude the tree completely. I have to retain some foliage for it to look like a proper tree. And all I have to do now is to clean up the debris. There are lots of dead needles. Can you see lots of dead needles still around the tree? And when I've done that, we will see what it looks like okay so I have here Steve who tells me he's been coming here for 25 years or more and he still remembers our white Persian cat we used to have a white Persian cat and a black one brother and sister one was jet black one was uh, pure white and that cat was so big it was like a dog so you remember stroking the cat <laughs> and uh, you said your boy was just uh, just born just born so how many years ago? How old is your son? 18. 18, all right. Okay, so that would be about right. So there you are. So we have old friends and this is the pine finished and uh, Steve is standing next to it. So you can see the size of it. It's at least eight feet tall. And this is just three sessions. So I've taken just, I would say, maybe two to four, five hours to do this tree. So five hours to do it. This is all the debris. Look at it. I reckon I've taken 60 or 70% of the tree out Easy. of the foliage and branches. So there you go. The beauty of this tree is the trunk. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As an addendum to this exercise that I've just done in pruning this large Gouvernensis garden tree, we were just clearing up all the debris and I just picked up some of these branches because I'm going to take them into my house to decorate the house. And I just noticed that some of these branches are so interesting. If we come close, you look at this beautiful shape here. It's almost like a bonsai that has achieved this S shape without any wiring. This is all natural. So we are lucky, but you can still improve it by pruning here and there to get the right shape. So what I would do is I'll take you through the process. If I don't want it that tall, I can probably prune it there, prune it there, prune that one there, and prune this one here. So you can see how I'm improving the shape all the time. Now let's look at another one. Let's look at this tree. All these contorted shapes on this tree has been achieved by pruning. You can see that I pruned there. I pruned here, I pruned here, I pruned here. So all the twists and bends is achieved purely by what we call cut and grow or pruning. Now supposing I wanted to make this a nice artistic piece, what should I do? Okay, let's give you some clues. Now there's a nice line there. This is not nice there. This is not nice there. So I've got a nice line now. Uh, I can keep it there. So I've got a nice shape already. So if this was going to be a garden tree or a bonsai, this is how you would prune the shoots. Now that is coming out the wrong way. 
I can either keep it or discard it or if I cut the top off I could get that effect look at it I could get that effect mm. you see so that would be a nice shape so just an exercise in pruning these are just discarded branches you learn so much so if you get a chance to just get branches you can learn how to prune now look at this one again now again let me show you this bubblenesis pine you see these curly shapes they've all been achieved by pruning over the years so i would have pruned there to get it to bend there now if i want the tree to grow this way i will prune all that off see prune, prune that now i want the tree to grow that way I'll prune that off. So that one I can probably prune here. It's a bit too long, I can prune that. This is a bit too long. By pruning the tips, I will get it to bud back. So this is what I do. If I didn't want that branch, I can prune that off. So I get to go, get to go this way. So this is how I would prune this one. Let's look at all these branches. Now that's another one. Okay, let's take this one because this is very dense. Look at that. If you had a tree like that, what would you take off? So there's a very nice branch here and it's going back on itself. So, the one I want to concentrate on is, now that is too straight, I'll take that off. That is too straight. This is also in the way. This is also too straight. That one. Okay, this is a weird shape. You see how it's bent on itself? Very interesting. But for this purpose, if I didn't want to have that, okay, I will probably take that off for now. Uh, maybe this is too thick. That is too thick. That is too thick. So if that was a bonsai, that's how I would have pruned the tree and achieved this shape. So that would look nice as a tree. So let's do one more. So if you get a chance to just get branches of trees or pines, you can practice your pruning by doing this. Okay, now this branch here, if this was a bonsai, what would I do? Cut and grow to get a nice shape. That is too straight, so I take that off straight away. I don't want that. If this is the front of the tree, I don't want that one sticking out. That's going upwards, I don't want that. Shorten all these. That is going in the wrong way. Can cut that off to bring it back this way. Now these are too long. Maybe even do that and it'll butt back. So if this was a small Bovernensis garden tree, this is how I would tackle the tree. So you can get that sort of shape just by cut and go to get the angular bends. So I hope this little exercise has given you some confidence. So get hold of branches like this and practice on your own and you will get a lot of confidence. So you've not destroyed a tree, you're just practicing on branches. And this is very good practice. You can even put wires on it and bend it and do a wiring practice on dead branches. So I hope these little tips have helped you in your progression of understanding bonsai. So this was an added on to the uh, Bovernensis garden tree exercise that I did.